Welcome to our monthly video series. In these videos, we will cover different topics each month, providing an overview of the issues faced by pension industry practitioners and offering some practical insight. The time spent watching these videos can count towards listers' continuing competence and PMI CPD requirements. Please do contact us if you require further information. Contact information will be provided at the end of the video. All the videos are available on the Mayor Brown YouTube channel. You can also subscribe to this channel so that new episodes are shown automatically in your subscriptions feed. Hello, I'm Beth Brown and I'm counsel in the pensions group at Mayor Brown. Welcome to the seventh episode of our monthly video series. In this episode, I'll be talking about new regulations which make changes to civil partnerships, including extending civil partnerships to opposite sex couples. These regulations came into force on the 2nd of December last year, and the first opposite sex civil partnership was celebrated on the 31st of December, so now is a great opportunity to tell you about them. In this video, I will cover one, the background to these regulations, two, the key changes made which include, as just mentioned, the extension of civil partnerships to opposite sex couples, as well as some other changes, such as that civil partners can now obtain a gender recognition certificate without dissolving their civil partnership, so long as their partner consents. And thirdly, I will cover the impact the regulations will have on occupational pension schemes. I'll start first with a bit of background. The Civil Partnership Act 2004 has allowed same-sex couples to enter into a civil partnership since 2005. However, after being refused a civil partnership, an opposite-sex couple launched a campaign to allow opposite-sex couples the same right to a civil partnership as same-sex couples. This opposite-sex couple brought a successful judicial review claim heard in June 2018 in the Supreme Court which argued that the 2004 Act breached the European Convention on Human Rights because it effectively discriminated against opposite-sex couples. Following this, the government announced plans to introduce new regulations in July of last year. Introducing civil partnerships for opposite-sex couples has been the main focus of these regulations and the media coverage around it. The regulations achieved this by simply amending the definition of civil partnership and the eligibility criteria used in the 2004 Act to no longer specify same-sex couples. The regulations also allow for overseas civil partnerships or dissolutions between opposite-sex couples to be recognised in the UK. However, the regulations have maintained the position that only same-sex civil partners may convert their civil partnerships into a marriage. This is because it's possible that at the time a same-sex couple entered into their civil partnership, they may have wanted to enter into a marriage, but marriage wasn't an option. So now that it is, they have the right to convert their civil partnership into a marriage. The same cannot be said for opposite-sex couples at the moment, although further regulation on this issue may follow. The new regulations also introduce some other changes to civil partnerships. For example, civil partners can now obtain a gender recognition certificate upon changing their gender without dissolving their partnership, so long as their civil partner consents. Further, the regulations introduce some detail around the legal aspects of parenthood within marriages as well as civil partnerships, such as presumed paternity, i.e. if a woman has a child while in a civil partnership with a man, that man will be the presumed father of that child. Finally, the regulations now also allow for religious premises to be approved for all civil partnerships, although religious premises cannot be compelled to allow them in their premises. I'll move on now to what the potential impact on occupational pension schemes is likely to be and what trustees of pension schemes need to do in light of these new regulations. The primary cost of these changes would arise from the expansion of survivors' benefits for private sector defined benefit pension schemes, as opposite sex spouses in a civil partnership may now become eligible. However, it's worth noting that one, lump sum death in service benefits are likely to be less affected, as previously an opposite sex spouse not in a marriage or civil partnership 
may still have been considered a dependent and therefore already have been eligible for the lump sum death in service benefits. And two, contracted out rights that are payable to a surviving civil partnership on the death of a member are unaffected by these regulations. In essence, the surviving rights are the same for a person in an opposite sex civil partnership as they are for a person in a same sex civil partnership. Finally, I would like to finish by talking about what trustees of pension schemes need to do to implement these changes. The key action is that trustees of defined benefit and defined contribution schemes will need to check their scheme rules, particularly the definitions, to consider whether any amendments are needed to reflect the regulations. Trustees should also speak with their schemes administrators to ensure that the processes in the event of a member's death have been updated to include the possibility of a member leaving an opposite sex civil partner. Please feel free to email me with any comments or questions on this video to bbrown at mayorbrown.com. This video is an overview of the law in this area and how the law will apply in any particular case will depend on the individual circumstances, so please do remember to seek legal advice on your particular circumstances. Thank you for watching.